Welcome to the Modern Savvy CPA, where financial expertise meets the cutting edge of digital age. I'm Sharon, your host, a certified public accountant, here to guide you through the intricate web of numbers and regulations, offering a fresh perspective of the ever-evolving world of finance. So in today's society, we are seeing our problems with with paying off debt more and more. We're having that issue, one, because our economy is a little constrained and um, we're getting back out there and we're doing all these things that um, we weren't doing before. We did well saving our money during COVID because we didn't have anything else to do. Um, I saved a lot of vacation money, which I invested in the stock market. now I'm not so sure I want to take it out and I'm going on vacation, but I need to do that somehow. So we're going to have to work on that. So, but we're having to struggle with that balancing the scale with our debt. We need to start understanding our debt a little bit more. So we're going to discuss 10 mishaps that people have when they're not when they're trying to pay off their debt. So we're going to talk about 10 little things that you do or don't do when you're trying to pay off your debt that you shouldn't do, you know. So the first one which I'm always talking about is creating a bu- not creating a budget. One of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're paying off when they're not when they're trying to pay off their debt is not creating a budget. Without a budget, what do you know? You know nothing about your money. You don't know where you are. You don't know how much coffee you're buying at Starbucks. Trust me. That was the number one thing I learned when I created my budget and I started tracking and tracing my stuff. So how did I start creating my budget? I started tracking and tracing what I was doing. So then it was easy for me to look back at my historical numbers and be able to create my budget that way. So try that way and see how that works. But without a budget, you know, you don't know what to allocate. You don't know how much interest you're paying on which card, you know, you don't. You're not able to look at what expenses you can cut. There are so many things that we waste on that we can use to cut off and just allocate that money to starting to pay off our debt. You know, the other thing that we do is the second thing that we do is we ignore high interest rate debt, high interest debt. You know, this mistake we can avoid, you know, we by how, how can we avoid, you know, one of the most high interest debt is our credit cards, you know, 28, 29, 30%, you know, that's so unmanageable. That's, we need to prioritize those things by trying to pay that off, you know, as soon as possible. If you are having issues with credit card, try with credit card debt and you have good credit. There are so many offers. I see it all the time coming in the mail, 0% financing for a year, 0% this balance transfer for a year. Try consolidating into a 0% and make your monthly payment automatic. If you owe $5,000, you know, pay off, you know, your amount every month. If you owe $6,000, automatically have $500 coming out of your account that's going to pay it off with no interest. If you think about it, you're going to be paying thousands of dollars of interest if you kept that card. So one of the things that you don't want to be in your budget is high interest. You want to look at that. So that's one of the mistakes that we make. We don't look at that. That is the first thing we need to look at. Only making minimum payments will get you nowhere. So if you are trying to pay off your debt and you're only making minimum payments, you're never going to pay off your debt. Try looking at one of those credit card statements. I know we don't get them in the mail anymore, but we do get them if we look at our bill online. Try looking at it once in a while. I always try to look at mine and look at where I'm at and understanding even the interest rate that's on there. So you'll see how long it's going to take if you make the minimum payment on a credit card. You're barely paying the interest off. It's like paying an interest-only loan, in my opinion, if you make uh, uh, just a minimum payment. You know, doing debt consolidation, though, without a plan, like we've talked about before, having a plan is key. Understanding when you're consolidating your debt, what is the best way to do it, what debt you want to consolidate, you know, having everything down in writing where you're tracking and tracing will help you to pay off things faster. It will help you, you know, for example, if you're consolidating all of that debt by, by looking at, at, at the one credit card 
that's the highest interest rate and you want to put those there and you don't want to pay any interest, then that's your plan. So make sure you're having a plan. Not having a plan is a big no-no. Not seeking help. Make sure that you're able to get do research on paying off your debt. Understanding that there are so much resources out there. Today, every single bank that I have seen have financial literacy. They are willing to educate you financially. All of them so far that I've looked at have budgeting programs, have education programs, have making your money work for you better, have credit counseling. So seek the help. It's there. Don't try to do it yourself. Try to understand how you're doing. Remember, we talk about tracking and tracing again. You, when it comes to paying off your debt, you definitely want to be tracking and tracing. You want to understand, you know, the sixth thing I have to tell you is you want to make sure that you're tracking and tracing your progress. You want to know where you're at. You don't want to worry about that. For example, I help manage my mom's um, finances. And we did not plan for this. Uh, she needed a new AC last year. So she does have money in annuity, and I could have taken her emergency fund money out and pay for the AC, which was, I think, $7,000. I don't remember how much it was. But instead of taking her money out of, out of um, her annuity, I decided she has really good credit, and she has all these offers coming all the time. I'm going to roll this onto a 0% interest credit card. She had one for a year and a half that we, we were paying. It was giving her, I, I think it was a year and six months at 0% interest. We took that AC, we transferred that into that 0% interest credit card. And we, I divided up the payments. I'm, I automatically have the payments going straight to that. Meanwhile, her annuity is making money. She could have afforded that, that payment. So I, before I, look, I looked at her budget, she could afford the payment. So I have her, the, 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 the payments coming out automatically. Yesterday, she brought me her bill. She's like, how many payments I have left? Oh, mom, you have three payments left. She still has her annuity that's making money. She's, she only has three payments left on her you know, 6,000 and change AC that we fixed. So to me, that's a smart money habit. It's 0% interest. She's still earning money on her in money that we would have paid on it. And she's diligent about making that payment because we worked it in her budget and it's involved in her budget. You know, you want to understand why you get, got into credit card debt in the first place, because that's the biggest mistake. Getting into credit card debt, not paying your credit card off when you get paid is a big no-no. So you want to make sure that you understand why you got into the debt. And, and if you can't pay your credit card off at the end of the month, you shouldn't be using it. So continue to snowball your effect into keep using the credit card when you're trying to consolidate and you still can't afford to make those make the, the payments on the credit card. You should not be using it. A diligent person should not be using their credit card if, if they're, they're, they can't pay it off when they get paid. That's just, you know, if you're not disciplined enough to do that or you're not disciplined enough to only spend what you can pay, then you should not be using credit cards. You have to be disciplined enough. That's a smart, smart money habit is to admit to yourself when you're not disciplined. You can work into making better money choices by w learning that new habit of paying your credit card when you get paid. That it's not an extension of your income, it's just a, a, a way to, to, to pay, make a payment before you're actually giving them the cash. So you need to do that. Neglecting emergency savings. So even though you're paying your, 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 your debt off, you want to make sure you still have that emergency saving. Like I said, my mom had that annuity, that's her emergency savings. We have it there. It's there. I plan for the worst, right? But, but I got an avenue here. A year and a half, no interest that can uh, be worked into her budget and she can do well for her. Still have the emergency fund, but no interest there. So you got to be smart about those things. Don't focus on only paying off your debt. You know, that's a mistake. You know, while you're paying off your debt, 
it should be a priority. That's something you need to be focused on mainly, but not only, not solely. You know, you want to be, you don't want to neglect all your other financial goals. For example, you should still be putting money in your 401k at least at the rate where your company is matching you. You should still be contributing to that. No matter how much money I have made in my life, I have always, always, always been putting money in a retirement account. I have never stopped, even if it was $25 or, and I tell my kids this, you still need to start, you still need to keep doing that. No matter how hard things are, you still need to at least getting the free money, especially if your 401k is being matched. So, and the last tip I need to give you is we definitely need to talk about do not ignore your credit score. Your score, your credit score, no matter what anybody else tells you, you cannot live in today's society without good credit. You, you, if you don't have good credit, you are going to pay for it with interest. So you want to make sure that you do babysit your credit all the time, more time than others, especially when you're looking to buy a house or you're looking to make a big purchase and you want to babysit it a little more, but you need to be keeping track of it. You need to understand how it's helping. You need to understand what things are utilizing. So get educated on credit scores, understand what can harm it and what can harm it. You would be surprised some things that you think will not harm it, will harm it, you know, like closing your credit cards and things like that. So you wanna make sure that you understand your credit. You look at your credit and it's easy. Every bank, every credit card, every, like I have a few different places where my credit score is being tracked and they send me notices on what it is. Experian does send you a, for free, a copy of your credit report. For free, you can track it on there. You can pay more to do a more robust tracking, but you can still track it for free. It still tells you stuff. I have the Experian app and I use it for tracking my stuff. So this is not, this is just a little synopsis on when you are trying to pay off your debt, things that you should not do that to, to try to pay off your debt. Make sure that you're being diligent and you're getting yourself educated and you're practicing smart money habits so you can make better money choices. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, feel free to give me a follow to get updated on new and upcoming episodes and listen in every Tuesday and Thursday where I teach you smart money habits so you can make better money choices with a financial goal focus.